Hello, welcome to the new video from City Inc Express. Today we're going to be fitting the continuous ink system to the Epson XP830. Uh, so this is a brand new printer. It's had its, uh, it's been set up already with its setup cartridges. Uh, so I've got the printer head over here in the left hand ink cartridge change position. Uh, so you need to do the same. So the way you can do that is to use the uh, status uh, or the LED screen and, and press the ink cartridge change button. Or you can power the printer on and then when the head starts to move, uh, unplug it straight away uh, and the head will then be free. So we've got it over here in the left hand side. Now you'll have already filled and primed your continuous ink system and what you need to do before you install it is you need to check that the roller is down tight and then we're going to remove the orange caps from the system. So when you remove the orange caps, when you do it, you will get some uh, a bit of spillage uh, or a little bit of ink that's coming out uh, of the caps from the priming of the system. It's not going to happen on this because I've, I've, I've already fit this system a couple of times to other printers. But you will need to do this, but I will show you. So just remove, pop the orange caps off. And... And then what we're going to do is we're going to dab it with a clean part of the uh, and just soak up any excess ink. And whatever you do, don't don't transfer the uh, the tissue from one to another to another uh, sponge because you could, could cross contaminate. Uh, the sponge and I think I've already done it on this one here if you look at the a bit of cross contamination from when I fitted it on other models uh, so yeah don't do what I do uh, nice clean tissue uh, and just dab it down straight on top to soak up the excess ink pop the cartridges over and pop them into your printer and click them all into place and then spin your ink line round and then we're going to fit the clip. So within your accessory pack you're going to have a clip which looks like this. You need to remove the uh, backing tape from it and it's going to be fixed here in the middle and just press down press down firmly there. Root your ink line round, just put it in the clamp and then lock the clamp into place. Now you need to make sure you've got a nice straight loop coming off here. No twists or turns or kinks, that would be no good. So you've got a nice straight loop straight round. Slide it all the way over to the left and then we're going to adjust the incline and make it a little bit tighter. And what you're looking for really is a little bit of a curve here, uh, nothing too tight, no sharp, that would be no good, it would restrict ink flow. So a nice gentle curve coming off the top and just slide it all the way over to the right and the back and just check that there's no... Uh, no twisting, no touching of anything, and it's it's quite free to to move around. Uh, also, within your accessory pack or on the incline itself, you're going to have another clip which looks like this, and um, we're going to root this, remove the backing tape from it, and we're going to remove root this one anywhere over here is okay to be honest, but we'll pop it over here, and this is just to tidy your ink uh, your inks up or your your cable routing. And, uh, so we're going to pop it, uh, we're going to switch the printer on uh, in a minute, but while it's doing that, just before I do that, we need to have a look at the uh, the scanner lid. So for this, this printer here, now we are printing with the lid slightly ajar, and uh, what can happen is that this scanner lid is, let me just adjust this camera a bit. Uh, so the scanner lid is... Is a bit top is a bit top heavy so what can happen is if the user come to use the scanner and they lifted it this up I just don't like this camera so just bear with me while I want you to be able to see this so I'm gonna there we are so what can actually happen when you uh, lift the scanner up if you're using this system and you pop the scanner up and then basically what can happen is that it's because it's not locked in you could get this scenario where the user comes to do it and they flip the lid and then all of a sudden the weight of this can just spring the whole lot up and then basically you could potentially uh, potentially rip the the top off its hinges uh, so to speak due to the weight so what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, we're going to make a we have a velcro strap for the side which will solve this problem and what we're going to do is if you take the the velcro strap 
and what we're actually going to do is uh, we're going to install this. I'm going to remove the backing from it and it, what this will do is it'll just uh, it'll just stop it from uh, springing back because it will always be locked in place. So just let me remove the uh, the backing from this and then I'll show you where it's going to go. It be a bit tricky to remove the backing from this, it doesn't really want to come off. Uh, right, so we're going to install, hope, let me just adjust the camera again now because we've come down, you're going to need to see this. So we're going to install this just there and the other end is going to go it's going to go here uh, so it's down there but what I'm going to do first is that I'm going to take this uh, this backing off now we only need we need to cut trim some of it so what I'm actually going to do is Attach that there, and then and what that's actually going to do. So when you want to open the printer lid, and what that does is that will then mean that the user can open this, and this is stuck, so it's not going to it's not going to come up. But then when you need to get inside, you can just do that if you need to get inside. So it's going to save the printer springing back. So that's your Velcro strap uh, done. So I'm going to power the printer on now. Just get the camera back in play. I'm going to power the printer on. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to put the roller on the side in the up position. And on top, we're going to remove the small flat plugs. So it's just going to run through initialization. Uh, now it's going to say to you, it may say to you that the ink cartridges are not recognized. If it says the ink cartridges are not recognized, you press the ink cartridge change button. And what will happen is the head will come all the way over to the left hand side. So I need to do that clamp. So it's just finishing its uh, initialization. So yeah, if it does say to you and they're not recognized, you press the ink card, you change button, the head will come over here, you just unclip them all, clip them back in, and the, it'll be sorted. Uh, so I'm gonna go into the setup now, and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna run a head clean. Don't be surprised if you, if you have to do a head clean. So I might need to change this clamp. It doesn't seem to wanna, uh, close properly. So if you just bear with me, I'm going to get a new clamp. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to let it run its head clean and then I'm going to change this clamp on here. Uh, probably because I've used this clamp quite a bit on uh, some other models, it might need to be changed. It does it appear to be uh, staying tightly shut, but uh, yeah, we're going to change this. So 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this, as I said, I'm just going to change this clamp. So I'm not happy with it. Uh, there we are, that's much better. Uh, a lot more locked in place. I think because I've opened that one that many times, it's just uh, lost some of its uh, ability to lock tight. Yeah, so that's okay. Uh, so to clean the printer, let's press, uh, yeah, so let it do its head clean. That's perfectly normal to have to do a head clean. Sometimes you can get away without one if you're very lucky. Uh, and then other times you'll have to run multiple head cleans. So while it's doing that, let's install the air filters. So within your accessory pack, uh, you're going to get some little air filters which look like these. These should be installed with the narrow pointed end facing upwards. So you'll notice this, this system, it's over on the right hand side uh, of the printer. It must be installed level with the base of the printer. Please don't raise it in the air. If you raise this, this in the air, it will just empty the entire contents into the bottom of your printer. Uh, so that's quite important that you keep it on the same level as the base of your printer. And just tuck it over here on the uh, right hand side. So if you wanted to loop it onto the left, it is possible with that one. You just basically get the curve coming around this way of your clamp and then exit over there on the left hand side. So I'm going to let it finish its cleaning, uh, its cleaning cycles and then we'll just run a couple of prints off. I think what I'll do is we'll get something underneath the scanner uh, to copy. Yeah, it's finished. So uh, the scanner, back to the scanner, as I said before, I have put this strap here. And the reason for this is so when you want to use the scanner, you can just lift the lid. It's not going to spring back. There'll be no risk of anything uh, but you just got to remember that on this side uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you it running with the lid closed uh, and then what we'll do is we'll pop the lid up just so you can see what's uh, what's happening underneath so you notice the lid is open on this one. Please don't try and close the lid on this. All it's going to do is just going to restrict the space inside for the tubes. And the product's not going to work. They'll just get, uh, it'll be a real mess. They'll just get trapped and uh, catching where they shouldn't be catching. So the ink levels on these, it does come with auto reset chips. Uh, basically when the cartridges run out and it says, so you can notice a bit of a incline spilling on the first one. That can be quite common to get that on the first one. But generally you won't get it on the second one. Uh, you'll probably see the second one uh, come out and it probably won't have them. So back to the chips, the chips will basically say uh, not recognise when it's run out of ink and to reset them you'll just press the ink cartridge change button the print head will come over to the left hand side and you'll just unclip the cartridge to reset it to full it will only reset the one that's reported as low or empty so you can see there the uh, dots have gone now and uh, well, you can see there that the uh, that the streaks have gone on the first print. That's fine. Now I wouldn't worry about this. This is actually on my master. I've got a dot here on the logo and a dot here on the logo. But just so you can uh, you can see, it's actually on my it's on my master. So that it's just basically it's just copying the print that's already there. So that's how it works with the. Uh, with the lid open, uh, closed so to speak. So I'm just going to pop the lid open so you can see. So again using the velcro strap on the side. And that's it. That's how you install the continuous ink system from City Inc Express on the Epson XP830. Thank you.